Hi, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another COVID debunking video. So this week when I was thinking about which topic to make this video on, there were just way too many to pick from. So instead of bringing you just one video on one topic this week, I'm going to bring you three different videos on three completely different topics, all on very popular ideas that are floating around in COVID misinformation circles. So let's jump right into the first one, which is misinformation regarding myocarditis. When it comes to adverse events to COVID vaccines, myocarditis is probably the one that gets talked about the most, but it's also the topic that people get the most wrong about. At the end of the day, the benefits that COVID vaccination will grant you far, far outweigh the risks that it can pose to you. But there are several people writing on the internet trying to convince you that the opposite is true. Some of these people have relevant degrees, some do not. But whatever their background may be, the fact remains that if they are trying to convince you that the risks actually outweigh the rewards for COVID vaccination, they are not telling you the full story. They are not telling you all of the data. So hopefully after watching this video and checking out the links that I provided in the description below, you'll see that myocarditis following COVID vaccination is not an excuse to not get vaccinated because the risks that COVID will pose to you are far, far greater should you get infected while not being vaccinated. Having fears and concerns about COVID vaccination is perfectly reasonable, especially with all the misinformation floating around. But the more you learn about a topic, the less afraid of it you'll be. So without further ado, let's jump right into this topic. So what is myocarditis? Well, the simplest way to put it is that it's inflammation of the heart muscle. It's a condition that commonly occurs following normal viral or bacterial infections. And contrary to what those who would try to make you afraid of COVID vaccines might say, it is not always serious. And by serious here, I mean that it doesn't always require medication, hospitalization, or cause permanent damage to the heart. Myocarditis can definitely vary in its severity. The kind that causes permanent damage, which anti-vaxxers will constantly scare you about, is referred to as fulminant myocarditis, but they usually don't tell you that. You can read more about fulminant myocarditis by clicking the links in the description below. So what's the deal with myocarditis following COVID vaccination? We know that this is a very rare event, but how serious is it? Well, we've given over 10 billion doses of COVID vaccines worldwide now, and all of the data are pointing to the answer of not very serious. Take this Hong Kong study, for example, that has been referenced by Robert Malone as being evidence of vaccines being dangerous. One of the lead authors of this paper who saw a lot of the patients involved in this study actually said that most of the patients recovered on their own. They didn't need medication or anything. None of the patients died, and all of their clinical signs returned to normal by the end of the study. Studies done by other groups of scientists in other countries echo these results. They have found that myocarditis following COVID vaccination is very rare, up to about 1 in 10,000 cases, and it is mild. Almost, if not all of the cases, recover normally and go on without any permanent damage to their heart tissue, because these cases of myocarditis are not classified as fulminant or severe. However, the same can't really be said about COVID infection. For example, a study recently published in Nature Medicine followed veterans for over a year following their COVID infection in order to see what kinds of adverse events COVID might increase over time. And they found that these veterans who had been infected by COVID had a substantially increased risk of adverse cardiac outcomes in the year that they followed them. Importantly, these adverse events were not at all limited to myocarditis. COVID increased the risk of several cardiac adverse events that are very, very serious. This included heart attack, heart failure, acute coronary disease, and much more. It's also very important to point out that the risk of these events increased dramatically the more severe the COVID case was. Hospitalized patients had a far increased risk of these events compared to non-hospitalized patients, and that risk went even higher if these patients were admitted to the ICU. And as we know, COVID vaccines are really good at keeping you out of the hospital and out of the ICU if you were to get infected by COVID. The risk that COVID can pose to your cardiovascular system has been known for some time. Several papers have documented this risk over the past few months, and I'll link them all in the description below for you to check out for yourself. So when people like Dr. Vinay Prasad are writing on Substack that COVID vaccines are very dangerous for children, make sure that you actually check out the paper he's referencing and see the full figure, which shows that more serious cardiac adverse events are much, much more common when it comes to COVID infection versus COVID vaccination. 
And that's not even to get into the risks of things like blood clotting following COVID infection. There are so many different dangers coming with COVID infection that it is undeniable that COVID vaccination is much, much safer. And yes, this risk does extend to younger age groups. Myocarditis following COVID infection is thought to happen in about 1 in 750 adolescents who get infected with COVID. Compare that to about 1 in 10,000 cases following COVID vaccination, which again, those cases of myocarditis are going to be much milder than those you would see following COVID infection. People who say otherwise really are just trying to scare you and get their clicks and their fame. If you really dig into the data and look at what it has to say, it's not going to agree with the people who are trying to scare you. So please don't be easily swayed by people who are just trying to scaremonger. So at the end of the day, if you are worried about myocarditis or other adverse cardiac events, it is far, far safer to get vaccinated against COVID than to wait and become a COVID infection. If you're really stuck on this topic, though, and you really, really are afraid of COVID vaccination, one option you can do in order to reduce your risk of myocarditis following COVID vaccination is to spread out your doses. It has been found that spreading out the two doses of COVID mRNA vaccines that you receive from two weeks to eight weeks can actually really reduce your risk of getting myocarditis. But the drawback to that is that you're not getting that really powerful double dose prime to your immune system. You also have less protection against severe disease should you get infected by SARS-CoV-2 during that eight week period you're waiting for your second dose. So it is something you have to weigh. And if it's something that you really, really are interested in and will make you get vaccinated, then talk to your doctor about it. It's an option. In any case, it is far safer to get vaccinated than it is to get infected. The data could not be clearer about that. That's going to do it for this first video of the week. Again, all of the links to all of the science and information I talk about are linked in the description below so you can check them out for yourselves. And if you like this, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me in the next video where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.